Okay, if you're taking any sort of math class that involves solving equations, i.e. there are problems with equal symbols and variables, well, you're going to want to pay attention because what I'm going to uh, discuss here is one of the best equation hacks that you can remember on quizzes, tests, final exams, midterms. So we are talking about test taking and we're talking about equations, okay, equations with variables. And this would be applicable to anyone really at the middle school level or beyond, okay? If you're taking pre-algebra, even maybe like seventh grade math, certainly algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, you're going to want to pay attention. By the way, too, if you're taking some sort of test like the SAT, ACT, this applies as well. And uh, what I'm going to be telling you is going to be very much like common sense, but I can assure you that a ton of students forget this when they are on a quiz and test and they end up paying a price on it. So if you remember this little uh, uh, technique, this little trick, this little hack, you can really help yourself out big time on tests and quizzes. So we're going to get into all this here in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, if you're struggling in math, you can do much, much better. So don't give up hope. What you need to be successful in math is, one, you got to work hard. Okay, So you need a good work ethic. Um, you know, learning math does require a lot of work. But the second thing um, uh, that's required to be successful in math is great math instruction. So you need clear, understandable, comprehensive math instruction. That's where it can help you out. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or college level, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. We'll help you out big time. Also, if you are taking any sort of tests that has a dedicated math section, something like the GED, SAT, ASVAB, teacher certification exam. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool, I offer complete full uh, uh, courses for homeschoolers for middle and high school mathematics uh, that might interest you. And also, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. But let's get into this nice little equation hack. And we'll uh, use this little basic example right here, this basic equation, as an example. So let's suppose you um, were asked to identify the solution for this equation. Okay, so one way you know that you can approach uh, the problem is like, well, what is the solution to this equation? Well, that's just you know another way of saying solve the equation. Tell me what the answer is. So in this particular equation, we have two x minus one is equal to seven. So to solve this equation, uh, you would have to add one to both sides. Okay, so here's the work for this particular equation. So I'm going to end up with um, 2x is equal to 8. Now I need to divide uh, both sides of the equation by 2. So I'm going to get x is equal to 4. Okay, so this is what I believe the solution to this equation. Now if I did all the work correctly, I would be pretty confident in this solution that I would write this down on my paper, say x is equal to 4. Of course, you would show all your work. Now, this is what you would have to do if you had like an open-ended question. In other words, solve the equation and write your answer down, okay? But guess what? Those of you who are uh, taking any sort of math course, there are a ton of questions that are not open-ended on your test and quizzes, okay? They are different type of questions. There are multiple choice questions, okay? Multiple choice. We love multiple choice. So anytime you see questions like A, B, uh, C as different options, well, that's when you really want to get excited and you want to perk up and you're like, you know, get a nice little happy face because this is going to really increase your odds of doing much, much better, uh, especially if you're not quite sure whether you did a problem right. But let's go back to this problem here for a second. So I solved this equation and I got x is equal to 4. Okay, so I'm like, hmm, did I do this right? Well, you can always check your work when you're solving any equation in algebra. Let's go ahead and uh, show you how this is done. Okay, so let's suppose here I have x is equal to 4 and I wanted to check my work. Well, you need to know how to check a solution in any equation. So how do you do that? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to replace that variable for what you believe the solution is. So here I think uh, the solution is x is equal to 4. I did all my work right here. Okay, now everything looks good. And I got x is equal to 4. But we can verify that, and you need to know how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that variable x for what I think the solution is 4. 
And when I do that, I'm going to get 2 times 4 minus 1 is equal to 7. So what are we doing here? Well, when you're um, verifying a solution or checking a solution, what we're going to try to do is we're going to do all this math on the left-hand side right here, and we're going to compare it to the number that's on the right-hand side. In this case, we have 7. So let's go ahead and see what happens when I do this math. So 2 times 4 is 8. So i got 8 minus 1. Well, 8 minus 1 is 7. Now, there's nothing for me to do um, on the left-hand side. I did all the math, so I, I'm going to compare that to the number that's on the right-hand side. Okay, so is 7 equal to 7? Well, this is a true statement, okay? So because this is true, because the left is equal to the right, and the number that, um, that you plugged in that created that situation is, in fact, the solution. So 4, x is equal to 4, is, in fact, a good solution. Okay, so this is how you check... Uh, solutions in two equations, basic algebra. But again, what we're talking about here is what do you do on a multiple choice test? Well, let's take a look at another example. So this technique that I'm, um, or this little trick that I'm telling you, it's really not even a trick, a little hack. I'm telling you right now, a ton of students forget this, okay? So if you remember this, on it doesn't make a difference what type of equation you're dealing with. Here, we have a quadratic equation. Uh, the previous example was a basic linear equation. You can have systems of equations, uh, logarithmic equations. You can have any sort of um, equation, advanced, much more advanced equations than this. This is going to help. So what you want to do is when you're taking any math test, okay, so let's say this is like question number one, you want to first observe, okay, what type of question is this? Well, it's not an open-ended question. An open-ended question would be, there would be no answers here, okay? It's just like, okay, do this work and tell me the answers, all right? Well, you know, those are actually the best type of um, math questions uh, for me when I, as a math teacher, because that's going to, you know, there's no, you know, guessing. You either know how to solve that particular type of equation or you don't. However, there are a ton of tests out there, uh, math tests, quizzes, and things that you're going to be taking in school, and all sorts of standardized tests, uh, things that count big time, things like the SAT, ACT, maybe the GED, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, if you're going into the military, that um, have multiple choice sections when it comes to mathematics. So here's what you want to do. So first of all, look at the problem. Okay, so if the problem it involves an equation, okay, and there's multiple choices right there, well, these questions you should always get right 100% of the time. So when you're scanning the questions on your test or quizzes and you see multiple choice and an equation, there's absolutely no excuse for you to get this problem um, wrong. Now, what you can do right here uh, is you look at the problem, you know, x squared minus 2x is equal to 3. So what are our choices here? Well, you can solve this problem, okay? You could do the work, da 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 and look to, you know, let's say you have your solutions right here, and then you're going to basically look at which one of these options, A, B, or C, has your solutions, okay? Now, that is the pr uh, preferable way of doing this uh, problem. But let's suppose you didn't know how to solve this. Let's say you looked at this question, and you're like, hmm, let's see here, you're scratching your head, and you're like, I don't remember how to solve this. Well, no problem, because you remember this little video that you're watching here. So what we can do is check the solutions, okay? We could just check the solutions right into this equation using this technique I just showed you, okay? Or just a reminder of how to verify solutions into equation and then just by process of elimination, see which one is correct. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll start off with this first option, um, A. So here we're saying that x is equal to one and x is equal to zero is a solution. So let's go ahead and check uh, this solution and we'll start off with x is equal to one. So that means I'm going to replace the x's with 1. So I'm going to put, instead of x squared, this is going to be 1 squared minus 2x, or 2 times 1. I'm plugging in this value into this equation. I'm going to see if, when I do this math here, does it match up to the right-hand side. So let's do this real quick. So 1 squared is what? That's 1 uh, minus 2 times 1 is 2. So is this going to be equal to 3? Well, 1 minus, uh, 1 minus 2 is negative 1. That is not equal to 3. So guess what? 1 is not a solution. 1 is not a solution. So 
because one is not a solution, I, I could just throw out this whole um, uh, answer, A, okay, no way this, I don't have to check X is equal to zero. Now, let's just be smart about this here. X is equal to one is not a solution. So when I'm looking at my other answers, I see X is equal to one down here for um, uh, choice C. So X is equal to one is not a solution, X is equal to one. So guess what? A and C are out, okay? <laughs> that leaves me with choice uh, B. Now, if I wanted to be kind of mean about it, I could put D none of the above, okay? And none of these choices right here. So let's just keep that option. So you're saying, all right, uh, so A is out. I don't even have to check X is equal to zero because this is wrong. And now here I have X is equal to negative one. Uh, so let's go ahead and now check uh, uh, for uh, choice B, okay? So it's either B or none of the above. I'll put that option in there just to make this exciting. So let's go ahead and uh, plug in these values. So we'll start off with negative one. So negative one squared minus two times negative one. Is that equal to three? Well, let's go ahead and do this math. Negative one squared is negative one times negative one. That's positive one. Uh, then we have minus two times negative one. This is going to be a positive two. This is like a negative two times negative one or positive two. So is one plus two equal to three? Yes, one plus two is three and three is equal to three. So X equal to negative one is a good solution, but we still have to check this solution here. X is equal to three because if this doesn't work, well then it's not gonna be uh, none of these options. So let's go ahead and quickly check this. And you can see, you know, checking solutions really, um, you could do this pretty quickly, even without the aid of a calculator. So let's go and plug in three into this. So this would be three squared, and replacing this X with the three minus two times three. Is that equal to three? So what do I have here? Three squared is nine. Nine minus two times three right here is six. So is nine minus six? Uh, three, well, nine minus six is in fact three. Three is equal to three, that works. So this is good. So uh, B is in fact the correct choice here. So you would select that and you would just ace this question, okay? Without even knowing how to do this. Now, a lot of you out there are like, this is so obvious, this is like common sense. I'm telling you at least 50% of math students, probably even a higher percentage, and I'm talking about um, top notch math students, you know, that, you know, do really, really well, they forget this on test. They forget anytime you're dealing with a multiple choice test, they forget to use this technique. Okay. And they'll be like, well, if I can't solve this, if I can't just directly solve this and then identify my answers, well, then I should just skip this question. Well, no, never, never do that. Okay. On a math test. All right. If you see equations and multiple choice, those are questions that you should mark for, you know, make sure you absolutely give yourself enough time to, um, you know, spend on those questions because again, you should get these questions right a hundred percent of the time. Okay. So don't forget this little technique. I'm telling you, it will definitely increase your grades on math, uh, tests and quizzes, etc. Listen, you know, learning mathematics is about, you know, learning math, right? Actually developing math skills and becoming better at critical thinking, but you're also taking um, math in terms of a course. You want to get as high of a grade as possible, okay? You want to get A's versus B's. That does make a difference, especially if you're in high school and you plan to go to college, that's going to impact your GPA, or if you're in college, et cetera, et cetera. So doing well on exams is very important. And if you remember this little hack, um, I'm telling you, you will definitely see it on your test and quizzes. All right, if this uh, little video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. If you need help with any level of mathematics, basic math, all the way up to pre-calculus, again, you can find all my uh, courses by going uh, to my math help program. And also, I have a ton of YouTube videos. Matter of fact, I have over a thousand YouTube videos from basic math to calculus. So you can just search through my channel if you like my teaching style, and that can help you out as well. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.